Welcome back. In this video, we are going to talk about the use effect. But before doing that, let's see what is the use case that we could possibly inject the use effect to in order for us to solve various situation problem. So if you if you open our application that we were working on, and this one right here, and if I click on get in like in the previous video, what we have did we have to click on the button right here in order for us to get or load our books. Of course, that was our previous code and you can get it from the GitHub repo, repo that we have talked about previously. But in order for now, what I want to do, let me show you what we have right here in our application, the final result, of course, that I have showed you. Now, if I click on books right here, if I, of course, reload the page right here, you will see that I don't need to click any button, anything right here. The books will get loaded as soon as the page has been loaded. So when the page has been loaded and now it's ready to show any content, then we are going to fetch our books from our database and display it right here. I mean, the user does not need to take any action. And this is what we are going to try to do. And by the way, I have no idea why this is taking so much. If we go to books, we can see we have this loading right here. Then our, bo our books will show up. Okay. And it's a good place where we have used the use effect. Okay. So now let me show you how to handle that. So here's our code from the free from the previous video. Now, uh, here is our button, I'm going to delete it. And here's our code. So we have our books that we have created. And we are importing that right here. And we have our hook right here, our use state hook, and we are mapping it through our data. Okay, so now what we want to do, we want to use uh, the use effect hook in order for us, whenever the page is loaded, we want to get rid of this loading text right here and show our box instead of that. So let's go ahead and do that. First of all, I want to type the use effect here before the return statement. You can type the use effect that will go ahead and import the use effect. Okay, you can see we are importing here on the top the use effect from React. However, I don't like it that we are importing the use state and the use effect separately. What I will do, I will cut the use effect and delete this line of code. I don't need it. And I'm going to paste it right here. I'm going to uh, import the use state and the use effect in the same line. Okay. Now here we have used the use effect and it's a function. So we have to call it like so. And uh, the use effect take at least like two parameters that we want to give. Okay. And the first one is the function. Okay. To tell the use effect what you want to do. Okay. So again, the use effect, it's a function that we have invoked and it take at least two parameters. Okay. The first one is a function to tell the use effect, Hey, what do you want to do? The second one, which is an optional, which is to give it a dependency list. What do I mean by dependency list? It's basically to control how many times the use effect should be called. Because again, the use effect is really, really powerful. Okay. And let me show you that right here. Here in our, in our case, like if I refresh the application, we can see we are fetching the books when the component is loading. So we are when, when the component is load is loaded like um, on the screen, then we are going to call the use effect one time. But if I show you the cart right here, if I open my shopping cart, we can I want you to focus on the total price right here. So if I increase the quantity of any item, we can see that uh, we are updating the total price. So we are also using the use effect right here, but we are calling it multiple times depending on the quantity of any item. So if we decrease, increase the quantity, then we are going to update the total price. So the use effect could handle this situation. It's really, really powerful. Again, we are going to talk about that later in more details, of course. But for the time being here, if you don't give it anything right here in the new version of React, it will call it only one time. Okay, so here what I will do, I will say log, I got called. Okay, so I just will say I got called like so. And now if we go back and 
open the inspect right here and jump over to the console you will see that we have i got called over here it's coming from the hook state and on line 9 if we check this file file we can see our console log right here so again if you don't give it any parameter right here uh, then it will call it one time okay however if you give it an empty array it will do the same thing it will also call it one time okay so again we will talk about how to customize this depending list dependency list in the next video okay for the time being we can keep it like so however when the component is loaded what i want to do i want to go ahead and uh, uh, let's say um, i want to uh, update my box right here to be the data that we have added imported right here so very simple what i will do i will say set set box to be our data so very 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 simple so if we check our application here whenever whenever i'm gonna refresh we can see it's been very 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 quick you can see that we don't see the loading uh, text anymore and the reason behind this is that we have our data right here we are not trying to fetch it so it will be very very quick so you cannot notice that so what i will do i will use the set timeout function or the set timeout uh, abi and basically it's a function that we al allow us to uh, call or do something after a specific amount of time okay so here i'm gonna pass the function okay and uh, a time for example two seconds which is 2000 milliseconds you have to specify it in milliseconds and 2000 milliseconds is two seconds so here the set timeout take two parameters the first one is the function and the second parameter is a amount of time okay so this function will get executed after this amount of time and what i want to do i want to just update my box after two seconds from the component has load okay so when the component is loaded we are gonna fire the set timeout okay the set timeout will wait for two seconds then it's gonna update our box very simple let's check it out so you can see we have the loading it will show for two seconds then we are gonna update our box and this is literally what i have did in our box so if i click on it we are gonna wait until we fetch our box from the database it will take three five six depending on the internet connection speed and it will load all the different books in our database and this is exactly what i have did and by the way it may take it may take longer depending on the internet connection speed that you have but at some point in time it's going to load all the books for you so this is what i have used the use effect for again the use effect it's more powerful than this we have we will learn how to customize it how to call it multiple times for example as as, as i showed you with our uh, right here in our uh, shopping cart i will show you how to customize it and call it like uh, this one for example call it whenever something happened in our uh, application so again this is uh, the use effect this is the easiest the uh, symbol that example that you could run into in the next video are going to talk about the array or the dependency list that we can pass over here to the use effect and see how we can customize it so i will see you in the next one